At what point did you decide you were never going to be rich? Never going to be exceptional but that was okay? I knew I wasn't going to be rich when I found the job I love. It's seasonal work, early spring to early winter, with chaotic hours, I find out my shift the day before I work it, usually working 8 to 15 hours, and lower pay, 13.50 an hour, but I'll be damned if I don't love it. I get paid to sit on my ass all day, reading books, and checking a sample every 15 minutes. My office is amazing, as I'm about 100 feet from the Mississippi River, and I don't deal with people. It's easy to get time off, my co-workers are super laid back, and my boss is fantastic. Nobody yells at me, I don't have any high expectations held to me. I adore the job, and it makes me very happy. What is this job, if you don't mind me asking? I inspect corn and beans all day, and sometimes look inside barges. Don't look under the beans. But under the beans is just more beans. The real scary crap is in the pits under the beans. The real scary crap is in the pits under the beans. It's beans all the way down? Nothing but beans. Sometimes a rat. Sometimes a dead rat. After a good rain it smells terrible. It smells like wet beans. And a dead rat. Wet beans smell worse than a dead rat. All right Huckleberry Finn. I was about a 30 year old chef. 50 now. Still love it, have a family. Work too hard for too little. Don't get to see them as much as I like, but if they need shoes or money for sports registration, I can provide. Just posted this above, but I thought given your username you would appreciate, it is no bad thing to celebrate a simple life. J.R.R. Tolkien. My life got a lot better and I became much happier when I embraced simplicity. I hear you. It isn't always easy, and I am by no means a pro at it. There are days when I lament that the opportunity to somehow greatly contribute to society has passed me by. But, then I remember that quote, and that many small good things, acts of kindness can add up over the course of a simple life, and be remarkable in their own way. Bruh, that's sad. I hate that some people work really hard and still struggle. A, part of it is where we live. Expensive state, but my wife wants to be near her family. Plus, I don't know how to do anything else. There's people worse off than what we are. You're rich in love, friends, family, and acceptance, plus, happiness in your life. Emo that's pretty effing rich. I wanted to be a chef as a kid. I also wanted to be a rock star. Not very good at either so I am a software engineer, but I was my ex-wife's personal chef for 13.5 years. That was fun, mostly. I wanted to be a Jedi. Edit, still do. Good. Twice the pride, double the fall. I don't think it's sad at all. He has a job he likes and he can provide for the people he loves. That's a beautiful life to me. I've decided it but I'm still not okay with it laughing out loud to be honest I don't think I ever wanted to be loaded, just enough to not have to worry about going over my overdraft all the time. I'm more bothered by the fact that I've worked hard and studied to end up in a minimum wage job which bores the pants off me. But I have a roof over my head and a loving partner and family so I'm still lucky. What did you study? I have masters in pizza making. That's the problem. You should have gone for pizza baking not making. Shaking my head people actually think pizza making is a reputable career choice. This comment was sponsored by the Pizza Bakers Union. I'm not certified to put pizza in the oven, you have to take that up with Tony. Same here minimum wage job it's boring but in my area it has a lot greater earning potential than more serious jobs due to overtime and overtime rates. I don't know where you are, but if you're near a major, I mean, like, top 5 sort volume in the country major, FedEx ground hub and good with money, I highly recommend picking up a third shift job as a package handler. They pay weekly, normally will have tons of odd available, they pay $14 plus slash hour, mine paid me $19 but I'm told I was at the highest compensated FedEx, Noki, and will bump pay on the weekends if they can't find enough weekend workers. 
If you're used to living on a minimum wage budget, you could probably build a lot of savings slash work there for six months and take the rest of the year off. That said, it's hard work. I lost 40 pounds doing it, and I barely weighed over 200 pounds. I'm basically in bum f nowhere of the UK minimum wage is perfectly livable here because there is low demand for housing etc. Very few well compensated jobs the nearest city is actually worse for employment, standard of living etc. I'd be fine with having the middle class life my parents had. What is difficult is wrapping my head around just that being so difficult to achieve. My mom stayed at home, only my dad worked. We had a comfortable house with a yard and a pool, two cars and my sister and I went to private school. My dad definitely had a good job but nothing extreme. My husband and I both work and we can't even afford a house. I feel like it will take me 10 to 15 more years to get to where my parents were at the age I am now. At this point I'm just going to prepare my body for the Thunderdome. The Disney vacation of New York is over, at midnight, your Lexus is going to turn into a pile of rats fighting over a human finger. Have you looked around at other states? In California $18 is still crap. Can barely afford rent and will never be able to own a house here. But in Texas or Arizona my $18 an hour would be amazing. I could buy a house and have a good car. In theory I don't even think my wife would have to work, if she didn't want to. Here in California that isn't an option. Five years ago you'd have been right about Phoenix, but in the last couple of years the real estate prices here have exploded. Lots of Califigis and people coming with money from the PNW flocking here and buying on droves. But in Texas or Arizona my $18 an hour would be amazing. Currently in Texas. $18 probably puts you below poverty in Austin. You can live on it if you're frugal in San Antonio and possibly Houston. Not sure about El Paso but Dallas probably has areas you could live in for that. Texas is eminently affordable if you like living in the equivalent of Barstow. It's not you, it was definitely easier 50 years ago. At least here in the US, wage stagnation, housing crisis, shrinkflation, this has been happening since the 80s. Edit, it's not your fault. I genuinely have no idea how my parents supported our lifestyle as kids. We were straight middle class and I know they suffered around the recession but we had a pool, went on a family vacation each year and I got to do basically whatever sport or hobby I wanted. Now that I'm at adult and making what is considered the average salary in the US. I don't know how you support two kids on this. I feel like this is the first generation that almost universally can't afford to have offspring and live comfortably with typical middle class jobs. I can't be the only 31 year old married person that still fears being crippled financially by a baby, can I? Lol dude tell me about it. I'm a physician, yet my quality of life isn't better than what my dad was able to achieve without a college degree was able to achieve. Makes zero sense. Just being alive costs so much. It's harder for everyone in their 20 to 40 range. People in their 50s and 60s grew up when America was booming economically and if they went to college it wasn't expensive in comparison to earnings and other big purchase. I never thought I'd be rich when I grew up. I'm content enough with a simple, stable life. Same here. I always strive to not be poor. Yes, I want to be able to retire with enough money that I don't have to budget or scrimp on basic stuff like groceries, medications, or socks. If I can own a home and have a couple dogs, that'd be great. Maybe go on a vacation once a year? Simple. Of course I'd love to have a big house with secret passages, a big library, and a huge home theater in the basement, but that's just a bonus if I happen to do really well. Same. I'm not ambitious at all despite working very hard in university. I just want a stable job that allows me to provide for a family and be relatively comfortable financially. Nothing extravagant. I think partly it has to do with the fact that my generation grew up with the 2008 economic crisis and now COVID, so we're naturally not very optimistic about the future. Exactly same here. I've worked hard my entire academic career, and have just landed a very average although stable job with progression options if I want them. I don't care about making six figures like so many people are obsessed with, I literally just want a comfortable enough home and enough money to afford bills with a little leftover for the occasional treat. I don't want a fancy car or extravagant holidays. 
I don't get why many people don't think this is enough. There's so much pressure on being rich that I find myself wondering if I should want more. I wouldn't mind being rich at all, screw the fancy cars and all that though. Money can't buy happiness but it can buy security and leisure. It can also buy the best damn medical care in the world. Same. I was smart as a kid, in the top 1%, of my year and therefore smart enough to realize that I had choices. I chose to live a happy simple life over one with wealth and stress. No regrets. I was the top 1%, too and ended up cooking meth and getting caught twice. I wish I had chosen the simple, meth-free life. Lots of regrets. A meth-free life sounds like a promise made by a vacuum cleaner salesman with a list. I'm a professor, and I was at an R1 university. There you are expected to write grants, and usually the professor opts to pay themselves out of the grant money for the things they are doing. Professors can get rich from this, especially in engineering, medicine, etc. It is how you become famous in your field. I hated it, I moved to a teaching-focused university. I like to be done when I go home at night. I like snowboarding and Lego. I am infinitely happier. Less money and fame, but who cares? Edit slash note, the idea is that at an R1 the base salary after tenure is usually around $100,000. Add on contracts, grants, speaking fees, etc. can double that. In most college towns in America if you make anywhere near $200,000 you can pay your mortgage off in less than 10 years and you will never worry about money again. I mean normal person rich, not yacht rich. An engineering professor who likes Lego? Color me surprised. Why is Lego always autocorrected to be capitalized? Because if it's lowercase you may not see it and step on it. Android doesn't capitalize it Lego Lego Lego, watch your step. Ow, I didn't see that last one. Damn it. I thought it might be an acronym, but I was wrong. Not sure why it is capitalized, but Lego is an abbreviation of the two Danish words leg good, meaning play well. GG gud legged. Because that's how it's spelled. Lego is a brand, it's up to them to decide how to style it and up to us to butcher it. It's technically the proper way to spell it. Like Nintendo is not correct it should be Nintendo. LEGO decided it should be in all caps. I don't know why. Because the letters are blockier in all caps. Next you'll be telling me they like Minecraft. My 9 year old son convinced me to pick up Minecraft over the quarantine Christmas break, single dad, I switched to work from home and do 8 to 10 hours days, IT. Ended up pulling in the GF, then a couple other friends, and one of them has his girlfriend playing. My son got bored and now we are a bunch of adults trying to get our kids to teach us. Minecraft is wild. The research professor describes my dad perfectly. He was a bachelor until his first marriage at 43, and I was born when he was 45. My entire childhood, he would go to his university office on Saturdays because he wanted to make more progress on his research. I remember times when he would drive me home from school, cook dinner, put me to bed, and then go back to the university to check on a simulation program that he'd written. He had to present at a conference in London in early October 2001, so I remember being terrified that something bad was going to happen to his flight, soon after 9-11. He only gave up his university office and stopped taking on new grants a couple years ago. His research partner, 10 years older than him, is still pursuing new grants and working like mad. It's a certain kind of passion, but a lonely one. It's really cruel for women who want families, by the time they get tenure they are in their mid-30, which makes it harder to get pregnant. You don't want a newborn in grad school when you make $20,000 and you don't want a newborn when you are trying to get tenure either. Agreed, though that can honestly be said of almost any career path a woman chooses. If you have a kid in your 20s, you don't get the foundational experience and are 10 years behind. If you have a kid in your early 30s, you miss the time when your career would be snowballing to launch you to a higher level, or you're not taken seriously enough to be considered for the advancement. If you have a kid in your late 30s or 40s, it's biologically more difficult to get and stay pregnant. And you still need to devote a lot of time to the career you just invested 15 to 20 years into. I'll be curious to see if this changes with more remote work. 
Will not seeing the baby bump lead employers to treat pregnant women more like men in advancement decisions? One of my lab mates in grad school got to hear the professor in the office next door to his, not our professor, yelling at his pregnant grad student to get an abortion or drop out. Professor didn't want to pay child support. It's true and it has happened to someone I know. My friend's PhD advisor had her baby and was writing grant proposals in the hospital the day after the baby was born. She was crazy, but she also had every aspect of her life planned out and she wasn't going to miss out on anything. Exactly why I'm happy being a staff scientist. Academia was almost the death of me, one of the most stressful jobs out there and not nearly worth it money-wise. Not nearly worth it money-wise. This makes me appreciate many of the professors I had so much more. They did a hell of a job, and it's not a job where you can clock out after 8 hours. Or have weekend slash holiday breaks that are entirely free. Many of them had families, and a couple had ridiculous commutes. And none of them make anywhere near what they're worth. But they keep doing it, because they clearly like what they do. If it didn't require grad school, I'd totally do it. Some of the research that the engineering professors did was kind of like a hobby to them, just with a much bigger budget. This is precisely why I left academia after my master's instead of going on. I quickly realized it's not the kind of job that you leave when you leave the office. My mind was always occupied by it, and it was exhausting and not worth it. Some people love it, I found it to be a miserable hamster wheel experience and I was still living the cushy grad student life, meaning, I hadn't been put through the torture of trying to find a job. I know people who did go on to get their PhDs who are now living apart from their spouses because the only jobs they could find were across the country, moving constantly, etc. No thanks. My father warned me of the perils of academia and this was back in the late 80s, so I can only imagine what it's like now. What are these academic grants you are referring to where you can pay yourself above your grade out of the grant? Everywhere I have been, there is a chart that dictates that if you pay yourself out of the grant, and it has to be according to a government-mandated salary chart. And you pay yourself in lieu of the university, to release yourself from some of your duties. I know my experiences are not universal, but could you provide some context for this? There are limits on how much you can pay yourself for a grant. But you can be on multiple grants, especially if you're working as a consultant. To make more money, some academics will set up a private consulting business and get put on grants through that, but it can get messy if they start using university resources, for example, student labor, to do that private work. I don't know all the ins and outs, but grant writing can make an academic stupidly rich. If I'm not mistaken, being a successful grant writer can give you some solid bargaining power with the university, because they get indirect costs from your grants, which could lead to a much higher base salary. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.